Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to the Risen Nation Church podcast. I pray that this message today impact your life and above all, draw you into a deeper encounter with Jesus. Okay, you guys, um, you guys eager to learn? All right, I've been on this journey uh, since last week. Last Wednesday, I, I started preparing for something completely different. I don't know why the, the Lord is, uh, he's teaching me to follow him better. <laughs> Say amen. He's teaching me to follow him closer and listen. And so it seems like the last few times that I think I have a word, that's not the word I get up here and minister. And like last night, it was like 12 o'clock, maybe not that late, maybe 11 o'clock at night, my wife came in, gave me a kiss, went to bed, and I said, well, I basically got to do like most of it over, because the Lord is just downloading. And I want to I wanna encourage you guys, like this has nothing to do with me or my knowledge or whatever, anything like that, but this is a pursuit to know him. You guys with me? And so when you have this pursuit to know Jesus, the scriptures begin to just be unveiled to you. And never, we can never study scripture. I think I've said this before, but anytime I, I, get, I sit down to prepare a message or just to spend time with the Lord, I always ask Holy Spirit, teach me, guide me, change me, show me, help me. He's our helper. He's our advocate. Help me to understand. Change even what I know, what I think to be true. And if we approach God's word with this mindset, with this uh, <clears throat> reverence, this fear of the Lord, because I've noticed in the past, and if I could just be vulnerable, that I have preached messages that I've heard my whole life that you can preach with power and authority and it just rolls off the tongue. But lately I've had these encounters with God and his word to where like it's so difficult to just get the, the, the words out to effectively communicate this, what the spirit of God has put on my heart. And that's the place that I want to stay. Amen. Like I never want to get to the place where I could get up here and it's, it's, I become an expert in, in like a, like a speaker, like a lecturer. And it's just repeated words, but I want to, I don't want to know the Bible. I want to encounter the word of God and his name is Jesus. And so sometimes, sometimes the scriptures chapter and verse can actually be distracting from the word. Because we approach the scriptures by prior knowledge, by prior experience, by what we think we know it's saying, and the word of God is restricted. And so I believe that the Lord will send his word this morning, that God from heaven is going to send his word. Amen. And so we have to be open to receive the word of God and not the Bible of God, because Jesus is the word made flesh. And so we are not trying to gain more knowledge and to, to be more biblically literate and to increase our theology. We are trying to behold him in a mirror. You realize that you're not in the mirror. Just want to make sure that's clear. Beholding the glory of the Lord. As in a mirror, it's a reflection of his glory on you. It's not your glory. Just want to make sure everyone knows that. It's his glory, and you become a reflection of his glory. And so I want to become a reflection of his glory, not just a repeater of theology. <laughs> you guys with me? All right. That's why we can't just read the words. We have to read the spirit behind the words. Can't just read what the words are saying, but you have to read but the Spirit of God is saying through the words. It's trying to express. And some people get caught up in translations, and we're stuck on King James and, and Amplify. Those are the two big ones. Those are the big boys. And NIVs for the kids. I don't know where we get this stuff from. They're all translations. I don't know if you know this, but Jesus didn't speak Greek. <laughs> he spoke Aramaic. So when you, when you take something from one language to another, what's that called? Translation. 
Every Bible, every book is a translation. So people freak out when you use the Passion or the Mirror Bible. It's a translation. If you don't have the Word of God living in you, that's how you misinterpret. <laughs> Are you guys with me? And so the Word of God must become carved in our inner parts, in our inward being, become us. The Word must become flesh in us, living stones, living epistles. Can I tell you something? There's two testaments in here, but there's a third one coming, and it's called Living Stones. <laughs> I said it's called Living Stones. We are the body of Christ being assembled in the earth, where as we speak, it's the covenant of God, the testimony of God, the word of God being revealed by a people that have been completely undone by his presence, a people that have been completely changed, a people that have been on his potter's wheel, a people that walk in authority because they've had, uh, they've had the opportunity and they've had the testing and they've had the battle and they've come out victorious, a people that have a reason. Listen, I said it Wednesday night, this year you will have a reason to be offended. I guarantee it. This year you will have a reason to cause division. I guarantee it. You will have a reason to be separate from God's body. I guarantee it. But God is finding those that are assembling, that supply the body by every joint. The body is supplied by the gifts, by only what God can give you. And so there is a supply that is given to every person sitting to in front of you, behind you, and to the left and the right that only you could give. There is a dimension of the word of God in you that only can be released through you. Listen, we've had generations of theologians mesmer memorizing scripper, scrippers. <laughs> scrippers, all right. Scriptures, wow. <laughs> take some water. All right. Scriptures. All right. Calm down. Calm down. Now I lost everyone's attention. All right. That was just free. So this is not what we're learning. That's just free. All right. You're welcome. All right. So I've been studying this, uh, I've been on this journey about studying authority. And what I'm finding out about authority is so cool, but you realize that to have authority, there has to be adversity. You realize that authority, um, there's two times in scripture where Jesus says, I give you authority. And it was never before a testing. It was never before an opportunity where our, what we know to be true, our obedience, what we believe is tested. In before, he gives you full authority. And so I wanna teach you this morning a little bit about what kingdom authority is, and we're gonna do some reviewing, but we're gonna read in a, in a little bit in Luke chapter 10, the 70 that Jesus sent out, when they come back, he says, I give you authority to trample on serpents. But it wasn't until they returned. And what did they return with? Nothing physical. They returned with joy. The whole chapter talks about how they got rejected, rejected, rejected. And Jesus goes through his woes of all these cities. And he says, shake the dust off your feet. And he says, don't take anything with you. And they had... Two by two, it speaks of covenant. Two by two, he sent them out. He didn't send them out one by one. He sent them out two by two. He sent them out as his body, as his expression, as people leaning into each other, people needing each other, people relying on each other. And he sent them out as sheep among wolves. And he says, you're not going to take anything with you and you're going to return with joy. And on the other side of that is your authority. And so we want authority because we can memorize some scripture and we say, I believe it. And we think that our authority is in that. That's great, but that's just where it begins. 
And so when we face adversity, when we face mountains, when we face battles, and then we're asking God to, why am I going through this? And we get offended at God and, and we get upset and we, and we hide in our corner and we, and we stay home and we don't come to church and, and, and we go through all this emotional thing and God is waiting for the 70 to return back full of power and full of joy after being rejected by city after city after city, coming back, returning with joy. And our authority is found in this place that we continue to build the kingdom of God despite what is happening in our life. True authority is continuing to press through, to press forward, to lean into each other when it doesn't make sense. That is how authority is produced. Authority is produced when you are, have nothing left at the, you know, you have more month left than your money and you are broke and you don't have anything for you, but you are faithful with your tithes and your offerings. That's where authority kicks in. Authority kicks in when you are a faithful friend. Then no greater love than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. God wants friends. And so in the laying down of ourself is our greatest authority. In the carrying of our cross, it's just, it, it doesn't make sense. It's counterculture. In the carrying of our cross, in the, in the crucifying of self, in the crucifying of individualism, I believe that the Lord is removing the curse of individualism from the church. It's a curse. And people get mad at me because I tell them that if your church is gathering, if your family is gathering, you should be where your family is gathering and not church hop. And people get offended at that. It has nothing to do with your attendance here because I don't need your attendance here. Don't get offended. I need Jesus here. Okay. This is my goal. You are not my goal. You are my assignment. My goal is Jesus. And so I need his presence here. I need his glory here. And sometimes his presence and glory is revealed greater when there's less people in the room. <laughs> sometimes the Holy Spirit has free course when you're not sitting on it. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be offensive, but what I'm saying is there is authority and God is removing those that are individualistic in their thinking. And I don't think, I don't believe that he's removing those as if he's getting rid of them. I pray that you stay, but I believe that the Lord desires this one thing that, that Jesus said, I desire is that they be with me, that they, this company of people, first Corinthians 12, this many membered body called Christ. Christ wasn't his last name. Christ is his expression in the earth. Christ is his body. Christ is his hands and his feet. The assembly of the body of Christ is where our true authority is and what creation is longing for. That creation is longing to be set free by a people that say, I refuse to get offended. I'm just going to get right into it. Authority is the power of choice. We learned it on Wednesday night. Authority is the power of choice. So you can have a prince in a kingdom, and he has dominion based on his birthright. So we have dominion based on our birthright because our father is a king. A prince can have dominion based on his birthright, but until that prince grows older and has been tested and has been tried and understands how to use his dominion, not until then can he walk in true authority. So authority is acting on the dominion we've been given. True authority is being able to walk out what we know. True authority is being able to be hit with every adversity, every mountain, every battle, everything coming against you to be able to be hit with it and stand on the promises of God. This is true authority where I can choose. How many of you remember the, the, the alcohol example I used? I can choose if I, if I don't have the ability to choose not to drink and I'm an alcoholic, if I am restricted because my money is taken away, my debit card's taken away, if I am bound to my home, I can maybe go a long period of time without drinking, but do I really have authority over that drink? 
But if I can have someone put a beer right in front of me and I choose not to drink that thing, now I have authority over that beer. I have the authority over alcoholism when I can choose. And so the problem is, is that offense comes our way because Jesus said it will. Offense comes our way. Trials comes our way. Persecution comes our way. And we try to figure out what's wrong. And it's like the prince in the kingdom and Jesus is waiting for his people to walk in authority and say, I choose not to be offended in this situation. There is more to your choosing than you realize. Adam and Eve were presented a choice, obey or disobey. And their lack of authority caused them to fall. And this season, this year, this is prophetically speaking as a church, we are gonna have the power of choice and how we make our choices will determine our authority. Your choices in a situation determine your authority in it. I'm going to say that again. Your choices in situations determine your authority in it. So if my five-year-old girl is crying and screaming and I lay on the ground with her and start crying and screaming because sometimes I feel like it as a parent of a young child. Can anyone agree? <laughs> My authority now matches hers. Right? But if I choose to act like an adult, if I choose to overcome, now I have authority in that situation. And so authority is the act of choosing it's the power to act on the dominion we've been given. Everybody with me? Yes. Authority is force, capacity, competency, delegated influence. I love this. Say delegated. delegated. Delegated influence. It's not our influence. It's his. It's delegated. And today he is sending a delegation into the earth. I said, today he's sending a delegation in the earth. Thank you, Jesus. Like everything in the kingdom, authority must be tried to be shown true. Like everything in the kingdom, authority must be tried to be shown true. Through the blood of the cross, Jesus has reconciled us back to himself out from under the dominion of death. And we, we, learned, we, we prayed this in worship. Colossians 1.3 says he has delivered us from the power or the authority of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. And so everything that was lost in the garden, everything that was lost through the fall of Adam and Eve in Christ has been restored. Say amen. In Christ, we have been redeemed out from underneath the curse of the law. We have been reconciled through G to Jesus through the death through his death, burial, and resurrection, through his blood, because when Adam and Eve sin, their sin immediately introduced death. But we are not under death anymore, but we are under grace. This is the throne of grace. You are in the kingdom of God. You see, if we actually believe, the problem is, is we don't believe it. The problem is we're too normal. <laughs> the problem is, is that we're too satisfied. But the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is in you. The kingdom of God is where you live. It's taking place right now. It's not some planet coming. It's not like past Pluto, hang a left and you'll see it after a couple of light years. It's the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is here. That's all his authority and all his power. And I am not the fullness by myself. And so the reason why I seem frustrated is because I am. <laughs> because you are full of the kingdom of God. You have just as much Jesus as I do, just as much his Holy Spirit, just as much revelation, just as much power, just as much authority, just as much anointing, just as much gifting. And I need your yes, I need to be assembled with you. Because I can't be the fullness alone. It's the fullness of Christ, the fullness of God that fills all in all. There are prophets in this room, pastors in this room, teachers in this room. 
and we're uncomfortable so we don't step into our calling. We don't step into our giftings. We don't step into our anointings. And we wonder why the body is lacking. I'm standing in front of David for a reason. <laughs> and so I need you guys to really believe that we have been conveyed into the kingdom of the son of his love. All authority, all power. And so because, say because, because you have authority is why you are tested in it. So Jesus says, here's the kingdom. I'm going to test it. It's like Jesus makes a, a sauce. Here's the kingdom. Spaghetti sauce. Thank you, Jesus. Test it. See if it's good. Test them. See if they have authority. Offense comes. Pastor Costi says something crazy. I'm offended. Offense comes. No one's hanging out with me. I don't feel like I have community. Offense. See, it's not a sin to be offended. <laughs> I said it's not a sin to be offended. Jesus said offenses must come. So it's like, it's like Jesus gave it to you before. He told, he told John the Baptist, who, who Jesus said is like, there's no one greater born among women but John the Baptist. And John is sitting in jail, and Jesus says, blessed are they that are not offended because of me. Like, it's like he brings it on. <laughs> do you guys want, want to get real, or, or do you want, you want to pretend Jesus, or you want a real Jesus? He says, the one who takes the bread is the one that's going to deny me, speaking of Judas. Guess who hands Judas the bread? <laughs> like, have you ever thought of that? <laughs> it wasn't eeny, meeny, miny, mo. It wasn't casting lots. <laughs> Jesus said, all of you disciples I've chosen, and there's one of you here that will deny me. What kind of God is that? We don't know this God. And so God will give you everything, and then he'll stir the pot to test to make sure that what you believe is true, that you actually believe it. Abraham's testing wasn't for God, but for Abraham. So God is testing us to make sure that we believe it, because I would rather have this and know it's true than to be a bunch of talking heads that are so spiritual and so Pentecostal and saying all the right things, but no true authority. Like, I'm not interested in preaching just empty words. I'm not interested in preaching because it, it tickles your ears and it makes you feel good and you can just, your lunch tastes a little better after this and you can feel better about yourself. But if we can leave here going, maybe I don't know as much about Jesus as I thought I did, then how would that increase your pursuit? Pastors are measured by how many butts are in the seat, but the kingdom is measured by how they pursue Jesus. The kingdom is measured by are we taking authority? Because you understand that a kingdom is not a kingdom unless it expands. A kingdom is not a kingdom unless someone doesn't take over. Jesus is in the business of taking over. And he said, don't worry, I'll send you my son. I mean, I'll send you the Holy Spirit. He'll come and help you. He'll show you the way. And so we like to, we really like to separate. We really like to have three gods. <laughs> we really like to have Jesus over here, the father way up there. And the Holy Spirit is for like Benny Hinn meetings. <laughs> we really like to separate them. How do you know that? Behold, our is, O Israel, our Lord is one Lord, yes. one God. So the Holy Spirit is Jesus. Yes. The father is is Jesus. Jesus is, was the word becoming flesh. Everything that God was, the fullness of him in a body, in a man. Like this is insane. And so when Jesus said, I won't leave you comfortless, I'm going to send the comforter. He wasn't saying, I'm going to send some other guy. He was saying, I'm not here in the flesh, but you can guarantee I'm still here with you. So the Holy Spirit is the presence of Jesus in you, helping you. The Holy Spirit is all that Jesus was on the earth. 
is even more so today because he says, greater things shall you do. Listen, where are the greater things? I don't want to just repeat it, but where are they? It's because we can't even vote the right guy into office. We can't even get the, the lunatics that want to kill babies at nine months out of the office. Don't tell me we have authority. Don't tell me we're making a difference. Until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdom of our God and his Christ, that's what I want to see. And God wants to expand his kingdom through a people of authority. It's time to make a choice. I said it's time to make a choice. Choose life. I said choose life. Voting for homosexuals is choosing death. They can't produce. When the righteous, Psalms 29.2, when the righteous, Proverbs 29.2, I'm sorry. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. God is raising up the righteous to be in authority. I'm not talking just about Donald Trump. I pray that God revolutionize his life with who he is. Say amen. But God is teaching us what it means to walk in true authority. That in every situation, I'm going to choose to lean into his body. This year, I'm going to choose. And listen, we, don't bring it down by like, um, Lord help me, us like hanging out. Okay, I don't want to get anyone to get offended. Like you said, we're a body, but, but like you don't hang out. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about shooting the breeze. I can hang out with my neighbor. He's not a, you know, a kingdom citizen. Pretty sure he's a Hindu. Okay. And I pray God get their, you know, their whole house. But what I'm saying is it has nothing to do with how much time we spend together. You guys get what I'm saying? I want to spend time with you, but what, but it's a unity of the faith. Paul says it's a unity of pursuit. So our pursuit and our faith is the same. And so my authority is in this, that I'm going to pursue to be one with Pastor Josh like I've never been before. If there's anything between me and him, I'm going to say, hey, we need to fix this because there can't be any division. If there's anything between me and Nick, we're going to fix it because we're family. I didn't have the option to walk out of my house. We fixed it. Or my dad would beat everyone. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Until there was unity. Amen. <laughs> Do you guys get what I'm saying? Yeah. So our authority is in our unity. Write it down. Our authority is in our assembling. Just a couple more minutes and, I, and I'm done. I'm done, I promise. And I didn't really get to any of the message. Can I get Robbie's? Can I get your help? All right, Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Are you guys there? Yeah. Then the 70 returned with joy. Say returned with joy. So he re they returned with joy after being sent out as lambs among wolves. They had no money, knapsack, sandals. No sandals. They were told, greet no one along the road, but whatever house you enter, this is verse five, first say peace to this house. And we've learned that peace it's not just the absence of chaos. It's not just feeling good. It's not just being mellow. But the peace of God is when he sets everything at one again, where there is a one new man, one spirit, one hope, one baptism, one resurrection. You guys with me? We have unity that speak. Speak is the setting at one again of the body of Christ. It's the Greek word arene. And so he's saying, whatever house you enter, speak this setting at one again. And how much of our language is more divisive than setting at one again? Sometimes we're just shooting the breeze or we're venting or we're having a, a discussion and we think that it's, it's not gossiping and it's gossiping and it's causing division because if I say something negative to my wife about Pastor Josh, which thankfully I don't do, now her, him in her mind has been corrupted. Now she may see him differently because she cares about her husband. So if I say, Pastor Josh, punch me in the face today, babe, at prayer, we're gonna fight. 
she's going to get mad at Pastor Josh. You guys with me? And so <laughs> we should have like a church-wide uh, wrestling tournament. <laughs> Victor. <laughs> Are you guys with me? And so we have to speak peace. Even in, in casual conversations, we have to speak peace. You have to speak what sets at one again. So verse 17 says, the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And verse 18, he says, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority. Say authority. I give you the choice. The authority wasn't given to them till they came back. There's nowhere in verse one that he said he sent them with authority. He said he sent them two by two. <laughs> We're not gonna get to the rest of the message, so. He sent them two by two before his face. That means in his nature. That means how he would go before his, before his face, before his thoughts, before his mind, the way that he would go. When a king would send out a messenger, he would send him before his face in his nature, in his image, in his likeness. Are you guys with me? And so the, the, the messenger that was sent was a direct representative and a reflection of the king. This is what Jesus is saying. I'm not gonna give you authority yet, but I'm gonna send you two by two. So you're only relying on the second one. The only thing you have is the one next to you. And I'm gonna see how you act. I'm gonna see how you respond. I'm gonna see how you return when it's just you and somebody else. I'm going to see how you lean into the covenant. I'm going to see how you walk without sandals, without money, without knapsack. I'm going to see how you deal with rejection because they were rejected up and down. I'm going to see how you deal with authority. I'm going to see how you submit and how you overcome. <laughs> Take it personally. This is not, this is not a, a condemnation. This is this is a, a testing. We're, we're going to be tested in this. And so does anyone want to be like churchgoers or do you want to be citizens of heaven? Okay. Do you want to be like an army or do you want to be citizens of, or do you want to be just church people? Do you want to be an army? Okay. This is what it means to be an army. I'm going to send you out two by two and give you nothing. I'm going to send you out two by two and I may not talk to you as much, but can I rely on Jeremy? to be there for me? Can he rely on me to be there for him? And in, in the journey of loneliness, how can we pull on each other? And this is what breaks the curse of individualism. This is what breaks the curse of just being by yourself is when you have no other choice but to lean on your neighbor. And then you realize it strengthens me and I'm gonna come back with joy. Like we met with Liz and Curtis on Tuesday or Thursday. That strengthened Eric and I. We had so much fun. And that, was, that, that strengthened our unity. That strengthened the covenant. It strengthened the bond. My wife and I are going on a date night on Tuesday. I'm very excited. This is going to strengthen our covenant, strengthen our bond. It's very rare with a five-year-old and a three-year-old. Do you guys get what I'm saying? And so he, he asks them, I'm gonna send you out alone and I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna command you to lean into each other. And then they come back, return with joy. And verse 19, it says, behold, now I give you. Someone say authority. Authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing, say nothing. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. And this is what I love about Jesus. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this. Like, that's not even the good part. <laughs> the good part is rejoice in this. Don't rejoice that the spirits are just subject to you because that's just acting like a son. They should be subject to you. We should be raising the dead. We should be seeing the, healed, the sick being healed. We should be seeing the power of God. We should be seeing the gifts and miracles. We should be seeing it. But we we've, we've, are so obsessed with church and ministry and no one teaches the kingdom of God because I guarantee his kingdom will offend your church. His kingdom will offend what you've been taught. 
And we taught that, you know, we think that Jesus had, had no idea that Judas was gonna betray him. We don't think that he's sovereign. Do you think that God's sovereign or not? Do you think that he has a purpose or not? And so this is what America needs to hear. God's purpose is way bigger than you. When Jesus, when Jesus began, began to bleed in the garden, crying tears of anguish, asking his father to take this cup from him. Like you guys realize that there wasn't a lot of joy, but he was a son being obedient. Do we wanna know God or not? He was a son being obedient, and he knew God's purpose is way bigger than me. God's purpose is way bigger than my feelings. God's purpose is way bigger than my comfortability. God's purpose is way bigger than my dreams, my experiences. God's purpose is way bigger than my vision, what I want God to do with my life, what I think my calling is. Let me tell you something real quick. You don't have your own calling. I'm just gonna leave that there. <laughs> Colossians says we've been called to one body. Romans says the gifts, plural, and calling, singular, are without repentance. There's one calling, one baptism, one hope, one body. You are called to a body. You're not called to the nations. You're called to a body. And then he will send you to the nations. He sent them out two by two and said, handle that. Throw a splash of rejection, a splash of you know, cuts on the bottom of your feet, and come back with joy and then authority. Somebody say amen. So just write this down. The word trample, and I'm, and I'm gonna end here, and then we'll, we'll finish on another, another time. But the word trample means to tread or to crush with the feet. So I think there's gonna be a part two about what the feet of God are. Because I was gonna get to it today, but I, I wanna make sure we're not, I wanna focus on that part next week, okay? Or in two weeks. I choose to trample on what has accused me and what has hurt me. Write it down. So trample means to tread, to crush with the feet. So you could say of verse 19, when Jesus says, I give you authority, this is the power of choice, to trample on serpents, the serpent that accused and deceived Adam and Eve. The accuser, serpents speak of accusers, subtle accusations, and scorpions speak of that which has stung you and hurt you. And so even in our hurts, even in our offense, even in our weakness, even when time is tough, even when we don't understand what God is doing, even when we can't hear God and we are offended at God, even in times that our neighbor offends us, we hear that people are talking about us, we don't feel community, we don't feel love. He says, I'm gonna give you the choice. Put it under your feet or let it have dominion over you. I give you the choice to trample on the accusations and what has hurt you. But without the accusations and without the offense and without the stings and without the pain, the authority that God has given us will never become manifest. And I'm not glorifying the pain, I'm glorifying the authority we've been given. But it's time to step up. It's time to be a military platoon. It's time to be a family. And so this year, I wanna run like we've never run before. I said, I wanna run like we've never run before. I wanna worship like we've never worshiped before. I wanna go after Jesus like we've never gone after Jesus before. And I love this building, but this building doesn't define Risen Nation. I have memories in this place, but it doesn't define what God is doing on the earth. What I am praying for, begging God for, is that the kingdom of God would be manifest on this earth, in this room, in your life. That he would give us situations that we can say, Lord, I'm gonna take authority in this situation. I'm gonna choose not to be offended. I'm gonna choose to stand with my brother and sister. I'm gonna choose to believe the best about that person. I'm gonna choose to not get offended at you when there's no money in the bank. I'm gonna choose God. 
I'm going to choose to be obedient when it hurts. I'm going to choose to know you're with me when I can't hear you. Father, we choose to serve you. We choose to love you. Malachi 4.3 says, You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. Say, Lord of hosts. It's Lord of armies. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. The God that sets at one again will crush Satan under your feet. That's not you alone. The feet of God are what holds up his body. The feet of God are what move his body. The head is not effective without the feet. The head must have the feet to move and to expand. Next week, we're gonna learn about what footmen are and runners in the kingdom of God. It's so, so cool. Joshua 10, there was five kings that Joshua conquers. And in verse 24, he says, so they brought out those kings to Joshua that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the captains of the men of war who went with him, come near, put your feet on the neck of these kings. And they drew and put their feet on their necks. I pray today that we can put the, our feet on the neck of everything that has beset God's church. I want to put my foot on the neck of the serpent, on the neck of offense, on the neck of false expectations. I want to put our feet this morning on the neck of things that come against God's bride. And they come usually in pretty packages. Like, hey, you can make a lot more money in offerings if you do this, make it shorter, change this, be less intense, spit less and yell less. but I wanna put my foot on the neck of religion and risen nation. Because the devil is not the enemy of God. I'll say it again. The devil is not the enemy of God. To say that the devil was God's enemy would bring the devil up to a very high place. The enemy of God is religion. The enemy of God is law. The enemy of God is thinking we could do it on our own. The enemy of God of our, is our set of principles and plans and rules and think that we've got God figured out. The enemy of his kingdom is self. The enemy of the kingdom is individualism. The enemy of the kingdom is division in the body. That's why Paul says, mark them. Like pull them out of the crowd Point a finger at them that caused division among you. That's how important it is. The word says God despise, despises all these things and he lists all these terrible things like adultery and idol worship and murder. And he says, I despise all these things. What tops the list, the cherry on top, he says, and those who cause division. And so Jesus comes and says, you're gonna be offended. But he doesn't say woe to those who are offended. He says woe to those through whom the offense comes. So if you're offended, take it up with God and choose authority over the offense. If you're offended, take it up with God, take it up with your pastors and choose. I will not be offended. I will not let offense win. And I'm gonna stick my foot, my foot, where we join together. You guys with me? I'm gonna stick the power of my foot, my unity with my brother and sister on the neck of the enemy called offense. But I will not ever say ever, ever let offense come through me. I've met with people that are talking to me about people in my church 
that think I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, you're right. What do you think I'm gonna think? It's like coming to me and talking about my children. I'm not gonna agree with you, even if they're right. It's like coming to me and talking about my wife. You think I'm gonna gossip about my own wife? As a shepherd of God, people that come in this house, I take it seriously. Like these are like my children. Is that okay to say? You guys are like my children in the, in the Lord. And so when, even when someone comes up to minister, I tell them before, don't rebuke my children. We've had worship leaders come and yell at people to stand up to your feet, not your place. Don't rebuke my children, let me handle it. It's, the, it's what God has given me and I take it seriously. And so I refuse, say refuse. Are you guys okay? I'm not mad. These are principles of the kingdom. We, we, the, this is all what the Lord wanted to say today because I got through 20% of the, my notes. But the kingdom of God is advancing and it's advancing through his body. The kingdom of God is expanding and it's expanding through his body. What I love about what Joshua says here and we'll end with this is verse 25, it says, then Joshua said to them, do not be afraid. He says this to all his soldiers, all the men of war who put their feet on the necks of these kings. And Joshua says, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against whom you fight. He doesn't say, the Lord will do this to your enemies, period. I need you guys to see it. He says, do not be afraid nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. Risen nation, be strong and of good courage. I said, be strong and of good courage. Respond like you have good courage and you're strong. For thus the Lord will do. What will he do? He's gonna put his foot on the neck of everything that comes against his church. But he says, but, but, he says, whom you fight. It's time to fight. I said, it's time to fight. Stand to your feet. It's time to fight. So there is a partnering required on, part, on our part with the authority we've been given. And our response in every situation will determine our authority in that situation. So this year, our sixth year, I believe that our sixth year is gonna be a glorious year. Say amen. Our sixth year is gonna be a prosperous year. Our sixth year is gonna be a year that we begin to build. The war, I did a quick word study on, on six last week and I just felt like God said, put it off to the side. But the word, the Hebrew word for six is actually the word hook. And if you read how the temple was built in Exodus, there was hooks that hung up everything. Without the hook, the temple of God would just crumble. The hooks held up the curtains. They connected the curtains to the walls. It speaks of God's body being assembled. This year, number six, God is gonna work on our body. God is gonna build on our body and he's making living epistles, stone by stone, brick by brick. We sing it, it's not just a song, but God wants to build us. But when he sends us out, he's gonna send us out two by two. He's gonna send us out in covenant and your authority is how you lean into covenant. And so I want you after service today to find someone you've never met before. Introduce yourself. If you've been a lone wolf, don't be a lone wolf anymore. You don't have the authority you could have in a house of covenant, in a relationship of covenant. And that's when the feet of God, and he says, go into every house and declare my peace. This is so good, guys. Go into every house and declare my setting at one again. The Lord our God is one. He has one body. You don't say Costi's head and Costi's stomach and Costi's legs, Costi's fat stomach. You say Costi. There's not his head and his body. It's all God. So he says, I must reign over everything. In Romans, until all things, say all things, all things have been put under my feet. And so when they're put under his feet, it's because they're put under your feet. 
God is waiting on his church to move, his temple to be built. And this year is gonna be about building. Our sixth year is gonna be about building. And God will test our authority this year. But I believe as our, we approach our seventh year that we will walk in an authority we've never walked in. Come on, agree with me. As we approach our seventh year, we're gonna walk in a power we've never walked in before. This year is gonna be a year of choice, a year of decision. Will we retreat or will we keep pressing forward? Will we fall apart or will we lean into each other? Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, as every hand is lifted, every eye closed, Lord, we love you. Just lift it a little higher, Robbie. Jesus, we need you. We desire you more than we've ever desired you, God. Lord, we want to be assembled as your body in the earth. Lord, we are not, we are, we are done with playing church. We're done with religious rituals, God. But we are asking, Lord, as your sons and daughters, that you begin to assemble us like never before. That you begin to create stronger covenants, stronger relationships, that you cause us, Lord, to lean on one another. That you cause us, Father, when we're faced with situations, when we're faced with choices, that we choose the right path, that we choose the path of authority, God. That when battles come and situations come, that we not get mad at you and think, what is wrong with me? What's wrong with God? What's going on? But we use it as an opportunity that our authority may increase in the earth. So Father, I pray that the revelation of your kingdom would come right now. Come on, every hand lifted. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that the power of who you are would fill every life, that there would be a mind shift, a change of thinking, God, that we are not trying to get to you, Father, but we live in the kingdom of God. Change our mindset, elevate our thinking, Father, from churchgoers and church attendees and pastors and house church leaders. Raise our thinking, God, to citizens of the kingdom of heaven. The Lord of hosts is his name. You are the army of the living God. Raise our thinking, God, to be an army in the earth. Renew our mind. Transform us by the renewing of our mind. That we not see each other as in, uh, see ourselves as individuals anymore, but we would see ourselves as a joint, as marrow, as a part of the body that you're assembling in the earth, that our head, Jesus Christ, may be exalted, and that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our God and his Christ in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen. Can we give God a big shout of praise? Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy is your name. Hallelujah. Well, we love you guys. Tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Who's going to be here tomorrow morning? I'm just going to put you on the spot. Praise God. 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Make sure you guys are here. Tuesday morning, 6 a.m. And then we have the assembly Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Pastor William will be here next week. Love on someone before you leave. Go introduce yourself to someone you don't know. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Love you. Thank you again for joining us for this podcast. We pray that above all, your life was touched by his presence. If you're interested in learning more about the church or getting plugged in, you can visit us at www.risennation.org or follow us on social media to stay up to date with all that God is doing here. We love you guys. God bless.